Sports Conference for the rematch of Charlo versus Castaño. You know, there's one thing that boxing fans love, and that's a unification fight. But what great fighters crave is to be undisputed. And that's what we have on Showtime Championship Boxing coming your way May 14th. The winner will be just the sixth undisputed champion in this current four belt system and the first undisputed champion at 154 pounds in this four belt era. Again, it is Saturday. It is May 14th, live on Showtime Championship Boxing from the Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California. It is the main event, the rematch of Charlo versus Castaño. It is headlining and it's brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions. Listen, the Showtime Championship Boxing broadcast will begin at 9 p.m. Eastern, that is 6 o'clock Pacific time. And it will also feature uh, the rising welterweight star, Jerron Boots Ennis, taking on the unbeaten Canadian, Castillo Clayton. That's an IBF welterweight title eliminator. It's the co-main event. And then we're gonna kick the broadcast off with Mexican contender, uh, Kevin Gonzalez putting his unbeaten record on the line against Puerto Rico's Emmanuel Rivera. It is a 10 round super bantamweight attraction. But again, it's really the main event is what all eyes, everyone will be watching as Charlo and Castaño will do it again and run it back. This fight is being promoted by Lions Only Promotions, uh, TGB Promotions as well. And listen, that venue has become magic for the sport of boxing, obviously for Showtime as well. And people want to know how can they get, get tickets. You can purchase your tickets through AXS.com. Again, AXS.com uh, to get tickets to be in the house. You certainly want to be in the house. We call it the punch bowl because it always brings a great atmosphere. It was an instant classic. The first time these two met, that was in the summer of last year, July. Um, Charlo Castaño, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe for 12 rounds, and it was on Showtime Championship Boxing, back and forth, until in the end, it was ruled a split decision draw. Each fighter believed that they had done enough, though, uh, to win the fight and have their arm raised to be undisputed, and will look to leave no doubt in the rematch. So. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce the fighter from the main event. And we'll start with the unified champion. He's known as the Iron Man. 34, one and one. He's got 18 knockouts. He is the WBA, the WBC, the IBF, super welterweight champion of the world. He's Jermel Charlo, the pride of Houston, Texas. And of course, the man he will be facing is Brian Castaño. He is the WBO world champion, 17-0, unbeaten, two draws, and 12 knockouts. Gentlemen, can't wait to see you two back in the ring. Uh, Jermel, let me start with you. I, I think the first question is, why will the rematch be different this time? I mean, everybody want to know why the rematch is going to be different. Um, I'm considered a puncher. I'm considered a boxer. So uh, I got some some things, some tricks I'm gonna bring out the hat this time. You know, um, I, I I hate that I didn't close out the fight the way I should have. And and one thing Brian Costano don't know is, I, you know, he he got his hands full again. And this time I'm gonna be better, stronger. I'm gonna be faster. Be more relentless. I'm gonna be that the old school Jamil Charlo that y'all know of. Simple as that. Uh, Brian, let me come to you. Same question. You, Mel says he's going to be bigger. He's going to be stronger. He's got a few new tricks for you this time around. You tell us why, champ. The rematch will be different. Bueno, Brian, eh, la pregunta es la siguiente. ¿Por qué esta revancha crees que va a ser distinta a la pelea original? Germán dice acá que vas a tener las manos llenas con él, ya que él va a pelear como el charlo de antes como que no te va a dar respiro. ¿Vos qué decís? ¿Por qué Brian Castaño va a hacer que esta revancha sea distinta? Yo creo que él sabe que soy un, un rival difícil. Él sabe que la primera pelea la perdió. Y 
que nada, yo voy a hacer mi trabajo, a mí no me importa, si viene a hacer el, 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 el charlo de antes o el charlo de ahora, a mí no me importa, yo voy a hacer mi trabajo que vengo haciendo día a día y peleas son peleas, yo hablo arriba del ring, a mí no me gusta hablar abajo y, y nada, voy a hacer mi trabajo, yo creo que él sabe que, que, que adelante tiene un guerrero de verdad y, y le va a costar, haga el, haga el trabajo que haga, yo voy a hacer mi trabajo. Chandler knows that he's going to be the one that has his hands full and the fact that I won the first fight anyway. I don't like to talk outside the ring that much, I like to talk inside the ring, but I can tell you what, I'm a warrior and I'm going to bring my own relentlessness to inside the ring to show that I'm, that I'm worthy of, of a win on Saturday. So regardless of what Chandler may say, new school, old school, bring it on, I don't care. I'm going to be ready for whatever challenges come my way. Mel, um, at the Spence fight, you talked with the media and you said, I'm going to knock Castaño out this time. You know, the oh, last fuck. time you, had, oh. you did say that. Um, the last time you had a rematch, that was against Tony Harrison, and you did just that. Tell us why you believe this time it's going to end in a stoppage. Because you don't, you don't give people like me opportunities again. You don't let people come in the game, and, you know, because I... I I know what we fought for our whole life. And if you get an opportunity being a brother like myself, you, you, you got to seize that moment, that moment and that opportunity. I'm dead in focus, laser sharp right now. And I, I'm, I'm, I've been, been grinding since you, since the complaint about your little bicep. I've been grinding. I didn't never stop. So what you did, you gave me more time to prepare my mind, prepare my body. I'm gonna be different. While you over there playing games and wanna, you know, little, little little games, I'm gonna have your ass in that bitch crying. I'm gonna have your ass in that heart hurting. I don't care what they say. This is the time. This is my moment. This ain't a, this ain't about Brian Castano. This is about the Charlo. Uh, Brian, you know, obviously Mel uh, questions uh, the, maybe the bicep injury that you had. He feels like you giving him extra time to prepare for you. But you know, you also told the media, Brian. I don't want to leave it up to the judges this time, and I promise you I won't on May 14th. Tell us why you believe that you can stop Jermel Charlo this time. Bueno, Brian Charlo cree que lo dejaste con vida de alguna manera, que lo dejaste tener esta segunda oportunidad para demostrar que vos no vas a tener una chance contra él. Pero vos también dijiste que esta vez no vas a dejar que los jueces decidan esta pelea y que vos no vas a noquear. ¿Por qué? ¿Qué te hace pensar, qué te hace sentirte tan confiado de que vas a lograr que la pelea termine antes de la campana final? Porque lo necesito. Es la pelea que, que para reivindicarme, para demostrarle que le gané limpiamente y esta vez tengo que noquearlo. Yo estoy peleando, yo soy visitante, estoy peleando en su país peleé en su casa y en su casa toda la gente vio que le gané y, y es más toda la gente eh, me alentó a mí gran mayoría gran, casi la mitad más de la mitad del estadio estaba alentándome a mí diciendo que yo en el entero me hice eh, local en su propia casa pero él dice que me va a noquear que, 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 que es más fuerte que bueno que lo demuestre yo lo voy a estar esperando yo hago mi trabajo y la rotura del bicep eh, son cosas que pasan, pueden pasar en el sparring, en el día a día, en el trabajo duro, porque realmente llevamos nuestro cuerpo al máximo. Pero lo que estuvo mal es andar hablando, andar hablando mierda, porque habló mierda diciendo que yo pospuse la pelea porque quería más tiempo. Yo no necesito tiempo para ganarle. Eh, no necesito tomar drogas para ganarle. No necesito, estar, no necesito nada extra para ganarle a este. Yo le gano tranquilamente y él sabe que le voy a ganar. Y que quiera noquear, que quiera tirar, a mí no me importa. Yo voy a hacer mi trabajo. Y él sabe que le va a doler, va a sufrir. Ok, we'll do this in uh, two parts. The, the knockout part and the injury part. As far as the knockout, I want it, I need it, I need it. Because it's my chance to be my father to know that I have won that first that first fight outright, I should, I should have won it outright. And look, I, I went into his home city and I turned the crowd against him. More than half the people inside that stadium were rooting for me, the foreigner, instead of the hometown kid. So that was something. And now we're gonna fight in the lane, we'll see what happens there. But I'm just gonna do my job. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go try and show why I'm the best. And as far as the bicep injury, you can 
believe or, or not believe what you want. What bothers me is that you know you're talking shit, and I really don't appreciate that because I don't need to cheat or take drugs or anything of the sort. I don't need I don't need more time to face you. What I what I can do is go out go out there and do my job, but I did not need any more time to make up anything to face you. Okay. Um. Mel, let me go to you. Um, if you win this fight, uh, it will be just a few days before uh, your birthday. Uh, nonetheless, it would make you undisputed and, without a doubt, one of the most accomplished junior middleweights of all time. What would that mean to you? The time, you know what I'm saying? The time. I wanted to step up to the plate and be the best and be greater than I can ever be. Testing myself, testing my ability. Um, understanding my ring gentlemanship, just just standing on my standing my grounds, you know. Uh, I didn't come this far to, to 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 give up. I didn't come this far to let somebody like this come beat me. I, I know my mistakes that I made. I paid attention very close, and I'm 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 gonna come capitalize on it. I'm gonna cross my T's and dot my eyes. Simple as that. Uh, uh, Brian, before I ask you the same question. How much did that bother you uh, to hear uh, Jermel question uh, your bicep injury and even uh, allude to uh, drug use? Uh, Brian, ¿qué tanto te molestó que eh, Charlo no solo haya cuestionado eh, tu lesión en el bíceps, sino que también haya alegado que te dopaste lo, lo acabas de decir, que te, que te molestó pero, ¿qué fue lo que, lo que más te, te hirió quizás de, de esas acusaciones? la verdad que no me sorprende porque él es la clase de, de persona que es él, él siempre trata de ensuciar a, a todos los peleadores que se enfrenta a todos, los trata de, 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 de cheater los trata a todos de tramposo a todos de... esto es así, yo creo que la inseguridad de él necesita a toda esa gente que le diga, oh, you're the champion, you're the Messi, y eso es lo que él necesita. Y también ensuciar a otros peleadores. A mí, la verdad, me molesta la, 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 la poca, eh, el poco respeto hacia el deportista que tiene. Eh, son cosas que pasan, una lesión puede pasar y se puede poner la pelea. ¿Por qué, uno, ¿Por qué yo tendría que tener más tiempo o necesitaría más tiempo para ganarle a él? La primera pelea fue una pelea cerrada pero él sabe que se la gané y la segunda pelea va a ser peor porque lo voy a noquear lo voy a noquear y él sabe que va a ser una pelea dura y realmente molesta la forma que lo hace nomás que siempre tiene que andar diciendo que él es el mejor y que todos son, hacen trampa eh, no puede, no, no soporta eso realmente es lo que lo único que molestó después eh, nada más Did it bother me? Yes. Did it surprise me? No. Because that's the kind of person that he is. He's trying to mask his own insecurities, the constant need to be told that, oh, you're the champion, you're the best, look at how great you are, by trying to attack that. The, the thing that bothered me the most, really, was the sheer lack of respect for, for a colleague, another athlete. I don't need more time to be here. Injuries happen. So, what, what I want is just the respect that I'm, that, that, you know, that I'm warranted, that I should be given, and the first fight was a close one. The second one is going to be even worse for him, because I'm going to knock him out. Um, okay. Brian, let me follow up on that. What would it mean to you to win this fight, become the undisputed champion at 154, and listen, you go down in, in the record books as one of the most accomplished in this division. Martin, can you give the translation, please? Oh, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, I didn't know that that was for bad. My bad. Uh, ¿qué, te, ¿Qué significaría para vos ser el campeón indiscutido de la división? El, que, el, el estar en el, eh, en el panteón de los grandes como, como campeón indiscutido. Primero, el historia de las 54 libras. Seguro, obviamente. Uno siempre en el boxeo quiere hacer historia, quiere demostrar ¿no? que es uno de los mejores... Eh, de su categoría, del mundo, están entre los mejores libra por libra, que es algo que cualquier peleador eh, de la élite del boxeo querría, pero para mí son peleas tras peleas que uno tiene que ir ganando y el que se me ponga enfrente, sea Charlo, sea el que sea, eh, vamos a tratar de dejar todo para, para, para salir victorioso y, y demostrarle también a la gente que, 
acá tiene un guerrero que, que, va, que siempre va a dar que hablar, nada más que eso. It's what every, it's what every fighter dreams of, right? What every, what every fighter sets out to do. You, you start building your legacy, brick by brick, fight by fight, and then you get the opportunity and you gotta, and you gotta make the most of it because they don't come along often. And I wanna show the people out there in Los Angeles and around the world that I'm a warrior and I'm out there to be a winner and to, and to provide the fight that people wanna see. Uh, Mel, you know, you heard Brian kind of allude to this, you know, the rematch is in California. Is that Dignity Health um, Sports Park there? And listen, that venue has had some magical fights there, but it's not in Texas like the last one was. What are your thoughts of now fighting in California uh, at Dignity? And, you know, they do have a large Argentinian contingent there in that area. I fought there before. I fought there before. I'm not worried about no crowd. And he know when he in there with me, it's just me and him. We done this before, but I'm telling you, I'm gonna I'm a evolve Jamel Charlo. I'm a much better focus, ready to go animal, just like straight up. Like, it don't matter the crowd. I've been there before. I fought there before. I fought all over the world. Like, you know what I'm saying? I got 30 some fights already. What I, 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 that's just behind me. You know, you gotta worry about that when you're 17 and over. When you're 17 or something, like you gotta worry about when you fight and all the crowd. And, and that's the that's the problem with him now. He let the he let them people tell him, no, oh, you want that fucking box trying to knock you out. No, oh, because I hurt you two times and it has you wobbling all over the ring, but I didn't knock you out. So they said you are. So that's his mindset. They got him thinking, oh, okay, he, you know, he 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 stood in there, yeah, he's a fight you are everybody a warrior. I'm a warrior, you're a warrior. Let's see who's gonna take that shit this time. Uh so, Brock. Brian, listen, last time you did fight in Charlo's backyard. Now you're fighting in California. I'm Houston, my backyard. Houston is my backyard. San Antonio is the city. San Antonio is the city. No, that is my backyard. That's my city. It's Texas. It's Texas, period. I represent Texas all over. Y'all know what I'm saying? 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 Y'all know in, uh, in California, you have a large Argentinian contingent that, that, that is in that area. How much does that motivate you uh, going into this rematch? Ahora vas a pelear en Los Ángeles, Brian, y eh, como puedes escuchar, eh, yo me dice que está acostumbrado a pelear donde sea. Pero vos, sabiendo que seguramente va a haber un montón de argentinos tocando la tribuna, cantando y, y alentándote. ¿Qué tal te motiva el saber que vas a tener a, a un contingente importante de compatriotas ahí? Realmente a mí no, no, la gente no me importa. Eh, siempre pide visitante a pelear a todos lados, sean 10 personas, sean 3, sean 100. Eh, a mí no me importa, realmente no me hace la diferencia. Yo voy a hacer mi trabajo, por más que vaya a 20.000 personas a gritar o que griten, yo voy a hacer mi trabajo y, y, y nada más. Realmente. Eh, no, no me cambia, no me cambia, porque realmente estoy focalizado en lo que, en lo que quiero hacer, en mi futuro, en la pelea, ahora está este adelante mío y lo voy a bajar, y sea que esté adelante, eh, lo voy a bajar con él, es así, lo voy a quebrar, a mí no me importa, sea Pablo o sea cualquiera, eh, estoy focalizado en mi pelea y, y lo que voy a hacer, ya lo, lo demás y se lo voy a hacer pagar el 14 de mayo. The crowd really isn't the factor for me, what well, I appreciate the support. It's all about me and him inside the ring. And I promise you I'm gonna make him pay for everything that he has said and everything that happened in the in the first fight. I'm gonna break him, I'm gonna make him suffer, and that's all that matters. It, it doesn't matter if it's in front of one, two, three hundred or twenty thousand people. What what I have my sight set on is him and only him. Me and him inside the ring. That's all. Mel, your response to that, he, he, as he talked about, he feels like he wants to make you pay for everything that you've said about him. Um, you, you just give me your response to that. I don't have no response. You know, that's what they want me to do. They want me to be quiet. They don't want me to talk. You're okay, Brian Castano, okay, okay. We, we, we will see. Uh, what, let me ask you this here before we get to the media. Listen, your division is phenomenal. You have so many really good fighters there guys who have kind of not now made, stepped up to the forefront, whether it be Fondora, Tim Zhu has kind of entered it. Where do you see the winner 
uh, Mel, uh, being the undisputed champ. Do you defend the belt and stay at 154, or after becoming undisputed, would you would you move up? I don't care. I just want to get this fight right here out the way. I want to show the world that that it's a reason why the Charlo twins, Mel Charlo, and why I'm where I'm at, why I'm one of the top dogs. I've been doing this way longer than this dude. I don't care. He's been somewhere fighting over there. He ain't never really ran into this brother right here. And when he see what I mean by that, he'll find out. May 14. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm gonna let him keep on thinking that it's okay and cool. Yeah, try. All right, we'll see. Uh, Brian, last question for you. Uh, what do you see the champion? You know, you win this fight, be undisputed. Uh, do you stay at 154, defend the belt, or do you move up? Brian, Brian, si ganas la, si ganas el título indiscutido, tener los cuatro cinturones. ¿Qué pensarías hacer? Preferirías quedarte en la división, defender los cinturones? o subir de división y buscar otro desafío. Bueno, que nada, eh, hay que pensar en esta pelea, ganar esta pelea, y ganando esta pelea, yo creo que nunca vas a poder ganar los cinturones. Eh, tener muchos retadores y el tiempo no te va a dar. Eh, creo que se harán alguna que otra pelea con los nombres que la gente quiera, que la, 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 la afición quiera, y después... Eh, a trabajar, creo que primero hay que pensar en esta pelea, y después lo que venga eh, se bienvenido. Hay que, hay que, hay que darle la pelea eh, lo que pide la gente. Lo que pide la gente se la se la dado. Uh, so, you know, first of all, let's stay focused on the moment. I can't just pass this fight. Gotta win this fight. Then if if and when I become undisputed, yes, I, I would say that you know, defending the four belts is an almost impossible challenge because there are, first of all, too many challengers that, and there's not enough time. So, the, uh, if I become a disputed, I would, I would just say that I will go up against anybody that the public wants and, and you know, please the crowd with whichever opponents they want to see me fight against in the future. Well, listen, I know there are a number of me members of the media who want to talk to you guys, so let's get right to some of their questions. Uh, Andrew Roberts is with us from Swanson Communications. Um, listen, members of the media, hit the raise your hand icon there on your Zoom. Uh, Andrew will acknowledge you, and then you can unmute yourself and ask the question to uh, either champion or both, uh, whether it be Jamel or Brian. So, uh, Andrew, if you would, take it away. Thanks very much, Brian. Really appreciate it. Uh, our first question will come from Keith Idek at Boxing Scene. Keith, please unmute yourself. You can ask your question. Uh, yes, I have questions for both Jermel and uh, and Brian. I'd like to start with Jermel. Jermel, he said uh, your chin has obviously been one of your greatest strengths throughout your run here. Uh, he said he was going to knock you out. I was just wondering if you could uh, maybe assess his power, having been in the ring 12 rounds with him, and maybe how it compares to some of the other fighters that you fought. Uh, I, can't, I, I can't speak on his power. That's not, that's not important to me right now. Like, I don't care about his power. I don't care if he's stronger. I don't care about none of that. It's about skills, and we're going to show that on the full team. I don't care about assessing someone's power. I don't he this and this and that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I've been here with hard, about hard punches in it. Uh, um, have you gone back and watched the fight several times? Yes. Yes. I studied. I studied this time. Uh, what did you think? The, the scores were all over the place, obviously. What did you think was a fair score after watching it a few times yourself? Um, I won the fight, period. Never let him down on my side. I, I, I hurt him way more. He made an edge a few rounds. I won the end of the fight. Won the beginning of the first couple of rounds. I don't know what y'all talking about. Uh, simple as that. Y'all go, go watch the fight? Did y'all go back and watch that, that fight? You study it round by round? What you think? Excellent. I, I will. I just have one more question for you. Um, how I, confidence has never been an issue for you, obviously, but um, how much more comfortable does it make it for you that you've been down this road before? You, you, you know, you fought Tony Harrison the first time, and you came back and knocked him out. How much more comfortable does that make you going into this rematch, having been down that road? I know what I'm about. I know what I possess in the ring. I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable even with two in the storm. I was built for this. I was bred for this. This is not just some old jump. I'm, I'm made for this, so I'm comfortable enough to be in this. Thanks, Jamel. Uh, Brian, same question to you. After going back and watching the fight, 
what do you think was for the 12 round fight? Eh, eh, me imagino que ha vuelto y has estudiado la pelea que tuviste contra Charlo. En tu opinión, ¿cuál hubiese sido un puntaje justo, considerando que los puntajes estuvieron de un lado para el otro, no tuvieron, no tuvieron una sintonía que digamos? Entonces, vos cre eh, Charlo cree que él ganó la pelea, no importa el puntaje. ¿Vos qué puntaje le hubieses dado a esa pelea? Eh, bueno, yo creo que la pelea la gané por dos puntos. Si me dan un punto, no hay problema porque algún que otro round ha sido parejo. Creo que en el 11 habrá sacado una diferencia, pero eh, la pelea para mí se la gané por uno o dos puntos. Realmente no me gusta puntuar ni nada, pero la pelea obviamente que la vi completa, la sigo viendo. Obviamente uno tiene que ir chequeando su... Eh, preparándose para la siguiente pelea, ¿no? I saw the entire fight uh, from, from beginning to end too. I studied as well. And I think that I won by by one or two points because the fight was close, but I was clutch enough to make the difference in those key moments where I thought I should have come out with the win. My last question is for Brian. Could you just detail how you injured your arm in training, how much time you had to take off, and when, when you came back to training, you knew that you'd be able to move forward with the fight on May 14th? ¿Qué pasó? ¿Cómo te lesionaste? ¿Cómo fue que te lesionaste el bíceps? ¿Cómo, fue, qué, cómo te afectó en la actividad y cómo has vuelto a, al ruedo en, la, en, en el entrenamiento? Bueno, realmente me lo lesioné en un sparring, eh, con un sparring un amigo que, que siempre me ayuda, eh, en el gimnasio acá, en el local boxing. Eh, nada, fue eh, un desgarro en el bíceps y, y nada, tuve parado un mes. Estuve parado casi un mes en tratamiento, mientras, mientras Charlo decía que yo estaba, que necesitaba más tiempo, que estaba que consumiendo drogas para, para ponerme más fuerte, para bajar, no sé. Eh, mientras él hablaba mierda, yo me estaba recuperando del brazo y tengo todo ese estudio, todo, todo, demostrando que fue así. Eh, pero realmente, sí, me afectó la preparación, obviamente. Necesitaba más tiempo, por eso se fue tirando, pero pero realmente lo rehabilité muy bien, ya lo tengo bien fuerte, gracias a Dios estoy esparriendo duro y, y ya, ya está vinculado, así que nada, estoy contento porque estamos trabajando y, y venimos muy bien para el cliente. The injury happened during a sparring session with an old friend of mine that always helps me out. I just plain on tore my bicep and I had to be, you know, just I had to stop everything for a month while Charlo was talking shit and saying that I was doping, that I was trying to become stronger through through other means and all I was doing was trying to recover. I have I have the I have everything to prove that, that was the case. And now uh, you know coming after coming back from that I'm so happy because everything has been going swimmingly, everything has been going really well, the sparring sessions have been outstanding and I feel better than ever before May for the All right, thank you for those questions, Keith. Our next question is going to come from James Bell with Boxing Source. James, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. All right, thanks, Andrew. Uh, two questions, one for Jamel and one for Brian. Uh, Jamel, your town sports president, Stephen Espinosa, was saying that you were like one of the more exciting fighters out there in 154 pound division and that you should be appreciative of what you've been doing uh, there at 154. How am I going to that in your legacy of 154 and if you get this movie, how that could like put you there as far as like being a host and as rich on Saturday? Um uh, if I'm being a Hall of Fame, you know it's gonna be legacy fights like this one. And I, I look forward for I appreciate Stephen Espinosa for uh giving recognition for when it's due, giving flowers when they deserve what they be deserved. But uh um You know, I don't, I don't, I don't create these lists. I don't make up these rules. I just, you know, what I'm saying. So, becoming a Hall of Fame is obviously my moment, and these are the moments I have. Hey, man, people, Brian Castano. I know that you know you had this fight coming up on May 14th, but uh, it seems like there was, you know, the delay for the fight that was originally scheduled on March 19th, but also. Uh, the previous year, like immediately after the first fight, it seemed like you know the fight could materialize during uh, 2021. Not like going to, if possible, why the fight could not happen in 2021. 
But you mean like why the first fight happened happened later in the year? What's what's the I mean what's the, the question? First, it, it, does, it happened in July. So what's the what's the question mm -hmm. uh, as far as why you hope it happened earlier? No, my question is the first fight happened in July. Why is it that it couldn't have happened like like in late season or in the heck? The first, the first fight against Charlo, you mean, or against another opponent? The first fight against Charlo. Okay, so why couldn't it happen earlier? That's the question. Right, yeah, why couldn't it happen? You know, between December of two thousand twenty-one. Uh, oh, oh, you mean the, you mean the rematch? Okay. Right. Uh, so it's uh, okay. Sorry, I was trying to understand the question fully. Can play that clearly. Bueno, Brian, my pregunta, the question is, why? La revancha contra Charlo no pudo haberse disputado como en diciembre de 2021, porque él se tardó, obviamente, primero hasta marzo y ahora hasta mayo del 2022. ¿Hubo algún factor o era simplemente el calendario? No, simplemente el calendario, obviamente. Se ve que él estaba después de la pelea, la primera semana, la segunda semana, se puso a entrenar de vuelta para pelear en diciembre. Realmente era algo que él quería, pero esto se arregla entre las dos partes. Y... Por eso le arreglamos para pelear en febrero, ¿no? Eh, así que nada, pero bueno, después me agradeció. Pero yo no voy a pelear cuando él quiera, esto se tiene que arreglar entre las dos partes y, y concordar una fecha que, que le quede bien a los dos. Eh, pero bueno, peleas son peleas. Ahora por algo se estiró para esta fecha. Realmente tardó mucho tiempo, pero bueno, eh, así son las peleas grandes y, y hay que esperar. Que en mayo 14. It was just a, match, a matter of scheduling, nothing more than that. I know that he, that Charlo wanted uh, December. It was something that he wanted, but it takes both sides to come to an agreement. And we have come to the agreement uh, that we to fight in March, which wasn't that far away from December anyway. Then the injury happened, and now we're fighting on, Mar on, on, on May 14th, where that's what happens with big fights. It, it takes it takes a little give and take. It takes negotiations. The important thing is that it's going to happen. And that we're gonna and that we're gonna wow the crowd and make something. All right, thank you, James. Our next question is gonna come from Erica Montoya with Millennial. Erica, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Hi, good evening, uh, evening to everyone. My question is from Brian Castaño. Uh, Brian, me gustaría saber qué aprendiste de la primera pelea con Jermel y cuáles son los puntos débiles que vas a explotar para esta segunda pelea. Eh, eh, Brian, si quieres responder y después, y después lo, tra lo traduzco. Ok. No, creo que no voy a andar diciendo de, de, de las estrategias de pelea. Creo que ya vimos sus, sus ventajas, sus desventajas y, y estamos trabajando en eso. Realmente es cuestión ahora de, de, de hacer nuestro trabajo que venimos haciendo todo este campamento en base a la primera pelea. Hay muchos errores que corregimos y, y venimos trabajando para, para que la pelea llegue, eh, no llegue a las dos en salto. Uh, the question from Erika was, uh, what did you learn, what lesson did you learn from the first fight and what weaknesses do you plan to exploit from Charlo? And Brian replied that I'm not about to, uh, you know, expose my strategy right now, but trust me, I have been studying him closely, I have been training really hard and really well to, you know, exploit the weaknesses that everybody saw in that first fight, everybody saw what his strengths were in that first fight as well, it's, it's not really a secret, so we have been training to be making sure that the fight doesn't reach 12 rounds and that we can uh, come out victorious before the final battle race. Okay. Thank you, Erica. Our next nice question is going to come from Cole Winston. With Fox World Weekly, Cole, please unmute yourself. You can ask your question. You there, Cole? All right. Move on to the next one. Uh, our next question is going to come from Caesar Seda. Caesar, please unmute yourself, and you can ask your question. César Seda por aquí, América TV, decisión dividida. Brian, ¿cómo, está, cómo tú estás? Eh, la pregunta es la siguiente, hay una pregunta que hay que hacer acerca de tu salud. Sabemos que fue, no fue hace mucho tiempo que se anunció sobre tu lesión del bicep. Sabemos que a veces estas lesiones se tardan en, en, en curar o en ser eh, para, para un combate. Normalmente 
unos meses esa una lesión parecida la tuvo Jordan y Subas luego de su última con Pacquiao y recuperó tuvo su, su operación también la pregunta es simple ¿estás al 100% para este combate el próximo mayo 14? por supuesto que sí, por supuesto que sí me ha tardado, ese mes que tuve parado fue ese mes de rehabilitación donde yo dejé de entrenar con una, entrenaba con una sola mano, solamente con la izquierda y en la derecha hacía la rehabilitación necesaria para, para, para sanarlo y gracias a Dios por, por, por nuestra condición física y realmente nos, nos rehabilitamos bastante rápido lo, lo único que aquí en Estados Unidos te dicen de cuántos centímetros el desgarro pero era grande pero realmente salió rápido, salió rápido, eh, yo creo que tiene que ver también en, en el organismo de cada uno, el metabolismo, la alimentación, las vitaminas, creo que esto también tiene eh, mucho que ver, ¿no? Gracias a Dios nos recuperamos rápido y, y, y nada, estamos trabajando duro para eso, hoy en día estoy esparreando lo más normal posible, gracias a Dios, fuerte y, y no, no, no tengo ningún tipo de dolor, gracias a Dios eh, voy a estar al 100 para la pelea para dejar todo. So the question was whether Brian is a hundred percent after his bicep injury, considering that it can be tough to, to rehab that kind of injury, but there is the presence of Kugas having for Pacquiao and the recovery by expense uh, with ample time to train. And um, Brian was saying that absolutely I'm a hundred percent and I am really happy with the way that everything developed. Uh, I was away from being able to use My, my right hand, my right arm, really, for a month. I, I could only train with my, with my left arm while I rehab my right arm. Here in the U.S., they don't really tell you how long of a tear it is, but trust me, it was a really, a really long one, and thank God that it was able to heal quickly. And, you know, I truly give uh, props to the way that my conditioning is. Nutrition, such a big key. The, the, the nutrition, the vitamins that we, that, that we take, and the way that we are able to be in shape, I truly believe that that helps a lot in the healing process. Uh, go ahead, Cesar, with the next question. Yeah. Well, hold on. We're going to move on here. Uh, okay. I think that Cesar, our next question is going to come from Keenan Atchison with Tunnelman Sports. Keenan, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. Um, my first question is uh, for Jamel. With the postponement of the first, well, with this uh, upcoming rematch since it was supposed to take place. I know you said you went back and watched the tape. When you went back and watched it again during the postponement, were there things that you didn't pick up the first time you watched the fight? Um, you know, little things that you may have missed the first go round that you were able to pick up on? Uh, yeah, I've seen a few things that I should have done better, you know. Um, uh, in, in this in what's crazy is those things are naturally in me. They're instilled in me, so it's like, why didn't I sharpen those tools and go back to these tools and all these other? But you know, we'll see. We'll go when we, want. you know, you'll see on the 14th. So for sure, those things are, I'm better at now. And also, uh, last question is for both of you guys. Um, you know, at 140, 150, 154, no man has ever held all four of the titles. What does it mean for both of you guys for your legacy? I need it. I need it. I need it. It's a need. You can't go to God without having something to need. You ain't nobody. I need that. And Brian, ¿qué significaría para vos ser el primer el campeón indiscutido de la división de las 154 libras? ¿Y por qué? ¿Y por qué es algo canela tanto? Porque Charlo acaba de decir es algo que necesita, es algo canela. ¿Y vos, y, y vos por qué sentís canela esta esta distinción? Yo creo que es el sueño de todo peleador, de todo boxeador, llegar a, a ser campeón de los cuatro cinturones. Eh, es, es, un, es un sueño para todos, creo que eh, no cualquiera me unifica y esta es la posibilidad. Y realmente uno en la cúspide de su carrera, en su mejor momento, quiere demostrar y pelear con los mejores. You will be making a dream come true, simple as that. And then, when you're at the prime of your career and you have a chance like this, you better squeeze it. You better not let it go because it doesn't come around of being a display. It's not just for anybody. So when you're in that position to be a chosen one in this sport, 
you better take advantage of it and I plan to do so. All right, thank you for that, Keenan. Uh, next up, Diego Maria with MTV.com. Diego, please unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Hello, everyone. Uh, uh, this question is for both fighters. I'm going to ask it in both languages. Um, in the first fight, uh, you both got a taste of each other's power and boxing skills. It was a fight that had a lot, a lot going in every department. Uh, with all that knowledge that you acquired from each other, uh, how hard did you have to work on a new game plan for the rematch? And especially, how much of that game plan are you neglecting by betting the world a knockout? Eh, la pregunta de Brian es, en la primera pelea, eh, los dos probaron la potencia y la habilidad del otro. Fue una pelea que tuvo mucho en todos los departamentos. Con todo ese conocimiento, eh, ¿qué tantos cambios o qué tanto tuviste que trabajar para un nuevo plan de pelea en la revancha? ¿Cuánto de eso estás negando o estás dejando de lado para el Yo creo que el nocao viene solo. El nocao viene solo en base al trabajo que uno hace. ¿no? Creo que hemos trabajado eh, muy fuerte, como en todos los campamentos, yo siempre trabajo muy fuerte, trato de dejar el 100 en cada entrenamiento. Y, y nada, peleas son peleas. Eh, esto es así, uno va a dejar el 100% arriba del ring y va a dar todo, obviamente que el knockout viene solo, eh, es así, yo voy a trabajar, voy a hacer mi trabajo, si se cae antes del 12, bien, si no le voy a moler a palo, lo voy a hacer wrong. es así. Uh, with oh, all the knowledge, no, sorry, I, I was uh, sorry, I was going to translate. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, the I, the knockout comes on its own, really. And um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to knock him out before the twelve rounds are over. And if that doesn't happen, then I'm just going to beat him up for twelve rounds. So it's really about not forcing the knockout, letting things flow, and I'm going to fight the way I know how to fight for twelve rounds. Uh, Go ahead, it, it's like it's like it, all we got to do is just listen to our team, stick with our coaches, and we focus. You know what I'm saying? And, and the knockout gonna come. For me, I don't gotta try for stuff like that. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm with you. God. They, they need to be worried about me knocking them out. Like they worry about him knocking me out. He, he gonna he gonna see he said get run into a trap. And you understand that? By like, we'll we'll talk about that after the fight. Uh, Thank you, Diego. Our last question is going to come from Terrell Van with Fight 360. Terrell, you can unmute yourself. Please ask your question. Martin, no sé ni lo que dijo. ¿Qué cosa? Ah, que que lo que dijo, si lo dijo Germán. Eh, ok, eh, que lo que dijo Germán es que el knockout va, eh, que él tampoco va, va a buscar el knockout, que él va a, hacer, que él va a hacer su pelea y que va a demostrar dentro del ring lo, de, lo que, de lo que es capaz. ¿Le querés responder algo o no? O, o simplemente vamos a la próxima pregunta. ¿Que no lo demostró en la primera pelea? ¿Que necesita pelea y pelea para ir demostrando cosas? Look, uh, just, uh, Chalo, to, you know, to what you just said, you didn't, sh you didn't show what you just said in the, in the first fight. So let's see what happens in the, in the second fight, because What, what you were just saying about the knockout and everything, you really, you really didn't show it in that first fight. Uh, he with a good shot in the third round, he never put me down, but I had him bagging up. Thought he was really in his guy. It's okay. We gonna prove what we talking about when, when it comes out on May 14. We We're gonna see. We gonna see if you if you gonna be that guy that not Jamil Shaw. Okay. We gonna see. We understand that we we hear you. You didn't you didn't knock me out in the fucking fight either. So what you talking about? Vos tampoco me noqueaste, así que no sé de qué estás hablando. Who got hurt more? Who got hurt more? Ask Who got hurt for real? Eh, ¿quién, estu quién, quién, ¿Quién sufrió más daño en esa pelea, Brian? ¿Quién fue el que, el que sufrió más durante los 12 rounds? Y, y yo no creo que, que vos fuiste el que sufrió más, que tuviste un buen golpe en el tercer round, pero que no lo, no lo tumbaste tampoco de una manera 
de una manera decisiva que, que vos tampoco te, te pudiste, pudiste dominar de la, de la manera en que querías y que él en realidad te hizo más daño de lo que vos le hiciste a él. Solo tres rounds. Only two rounds. Yeah. I yeah. give you nine. Nine. Nine, maybe third, third. Está diciendo que, está diciendo que lo vas a copiar en el tercer round. Yo, no, no, no. Yo le pegué nueve rounds, nueve rounds le pegué y él sabe que nueve rounds. Eleven rounds, twelve rounds, he's almost out of there too. Eleven rounds and twelve rounds. He's saying that he hit that that he hit you hard for nine rounds and that you barely hit him for two or three round stops. That he was dominating the fight for over two thirds of it. He didn't, win this. he didn't win all of them, man. Then that, that means he would have won the fight if all he won two rounds. Think I should throw some gas? He said that you won two rounds, only. That, I mean, if he won, he would have won the fight. Who won the fight then? What fight did he see? I don't know what fight he saw. He saw the fight and he saw the winner. I don't understand. I don't know what kind of fight you saw. I don't know how you can see the fight through rose-colored glasses and still see yourself the winner because I truly don't get it. I, I don't know what fight you're saying where, where you see yourself winning so clearly about this fight. I tell you what yeah, about that talking. Yeah, yeah, this, this, about that talking. Hey, uh, hey look, this, this is great. This is why uh, you got to have a rematch of this magnitude. Two great champions who are going to prove who's the best at 154 that comes your way uh, May 14th uh, on Showtime Championship Boxing. Guys, as we wrap this up, I want to thank all the members of the media uh, for jumping in. I always like to give guys just one last opportunity. Uh, Brian, we'll start with you. Uh, we'll wrap this up. Give members of the media and everyone watching, give us a reason why we need to be tuned in to Showtime Championship Boxing on May 14th. Decinos, Brian, por qué la gente no se puede perder esta pelea el 14 de mayo por Showtime en Los Ángeles, que vayan a la cancha, que sintonicen por Showtime, por qué no se la pueden perder. Como dije en la primera pelea, esta pelea va a ser una guerra. Tanto él como yo vamos a dejar todo arriba del ring, solo por mí, ¿no? Pero yo voy a dejar todo, voy a tratar de, de conquistar las cuatro coronas y a eso voy, a dejar una guerra, como siempre lo hago en cada pelea. No se lo pueden perder porque es una pelea electrizante. You you don't want to miss it because it's going to be an electrifying fight. It's going to be a war. I can only speak for myself, but I'm all, I'm going in there to come out with four belts. That's going to be the objective, and you're not going to want to miss this all-out war where we're both going to go for it all. Unified champ, I'll give you the final word here. Let the people know why they need to be tuned in to Showtime Championship Boxing on May 14th. I, mean, I know I'm on a whole nother level, and I know that I'm going to present myself when it's time. May 14th, I'm going to peak at the right time. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be, nothing that he can do, nothing he can say. Let, all this, let the people still go good. Let, let, they go champions, because they, they, they never fought. Those people that's in here, they ain't got here by me. I'm going to be dangerous. I'm going to be dangerous. Simple as that. Wait, I'm going to be that Jamel Charlotte. Folks, it goes down uh, May 14th, Showtime Championship Boxing, a three-fight card. Uh, you've got Boots in it, uh, Steel, Clayton, it's the co-main event. Uh, Emmanuel Rivera uh, taking on Kevin Gonzalez. That'll kick things off at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific time. But then you have the main event. To be undisputed at 154, the winner will be the first undisputed champion at 154 in this four belt era and it comes down to the unbeaten Brian Castaño 17-0-2 out of Buenos Aires Argentina taking on Houston's very own Iron Man the unified champ uh, Jermel Charlo from the USA the, from the yeah, USA from the, the, the WBA the WBC the IBF world champion and of course you know his trainer is Derek James uh, listen, one of the best trainers in boxing who just coming off a, a victory uh, against your Dennis Ugas. It should be an electric night uh, there in California at the Dignity Health Sports Park. You can get your tickets at AXS.com. AXS.com is being promoted by Lions Only Promotions and, of course, TGB Promotions. Gentlemen, best of luck on May 14th. Can't wait to see both of you warriors in the ring. We want to thank everybody for joining us. 
here on this press conference. We will see you May 14th in California.